The crypto space, cryptocurrency, tokens, NFTs, it can feel like the Wild West, and in some ways it is. It's even got its own gold rush. So when I have friends and family come to me and they say, how do I do this? How do I get into this space? I know what they're really saying is, how do I do this and do it in a safe way? Make sure that I'm dealing with legitimate people that are going to help protect my assets. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the industry's first security standard, the CCSS. Let's level set first. Why are we talking about this in the first place? This isn't my normal content, but it is. What's going on is the crypto space is so new that it's going through some of the growing pains that uh, were common maybe 20, 25, 30 years ago in the enterprise security space. So for instance, while Bitcoin, Ethereum, and even the Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs are becoming household terms for everybody, what's not becoming a household term is how are we safely and securely handling these assets? If you're a US citizen, you have exchanges like Coinbase, Gemini, FTX, Binance.us. These are proven exchanges that are safe to use and secure to use. You generally know about them through word of mouth. You know, they're, they're because of the immaturity of the space, there isn't really much regulation around this and you just have to trust that they've done good things in the past, they're going to continue doing good things in the future, they're not gonna be malicious. Now. On the flip side of this, in the security world, we don't have that word of mouth. We don't have to just trust that, hey, they've done good in the past, they're gonna continue doing good in the future. We have certifications that say, these people are trying to secure their technology. They are doing X, Y, and Z, very specific things like PCI and NIST standards and, and HIPAA. If you're not familiar with the variety of frameworks, obviously you can uh, go to my little blog here and you got a quick introduction to the three major types, which are control frameworks, program frameworks, and risk frameworks. I'll put this link in the description below so you can take a look at that. I'm not gonna to talk too much about it here. Like I was saying, um, we've got a variety of control frameworks. And in this video, we're talking about the industry's first crypto security standard. So what specifically is this? This is more of a control framework and I'm gonna dive into that below. So in the mainstream enterprise security space, when we're talking about standards, they're mature enough to the point now where we don't have to go and vet the organization most of the time. When we say NIST, we understand that's the National Institute of Standards and Technology. When we say PCI, we understand that's a industry watchdog group. When we say HIPAA, we understand that's brought into place by, by legislation. That's why it exists. And that's, that's where it comes from. We can just trust it. However, when we're introducing a new certification body or new organization, you should do your own research, do your own due diligence and go figure out who these people are. So the crypto consortium, they provide three certifications for professionals that wanna work in the space, but then they also are the uh, curators or the moderators of the uh, cryptocurrency security standard as well. One of the questions that you need to ask is, you know, who are these people? Is this like a lot of crypto space projects? run by anonymous or pseudo anonymous people and it's not if you go to linkedin look up the group and then take a look you can see that there's a lot of people on here that have uh industry experience they're real these are legitimate people um this isn't some some sort of elaborate rug pull waiting to happen like i said make sure you know who you're dealing with make sure you understand the background of the people that are creating the technology that's a, a critical component of, of anything in the crypto space so if we move back over to what we were just talking about you know, like I said, in enterprise security, we have PCI, we have the NIST standards and frameworks, then we have HIPAA and, and high tech and, and high trust and a variety of different ones. Those are all North America. I'm sorry, I'm leaving out GDPR. It's out there as well. They cover the full gamut of control frameworks, program frameworks, and risk-based frameworks. But we're here today to talk about the CCSS, which I believe falls more into a program framework. And I'm going to jump into that here. So the primary motivators of the C4 or the cryptocurrency uh, consortium, as they like to call themselves, is balancing openness and privacy, balancing the security and usability of crypto, and then finally balancing the trust and decentralization. And the last one's a big one because trust is really why we're here. So how do I trust somebody to handle my money? How do I trust somebody to handle my investments into crypto? Now, like I mentioned before, they have three individual certifications and then they have their security standard, which we're going to dive into right now. Now, the security standard has three tiers. They call them level one, level two, level three. To be a CCSA compliant organization, you need to be at least level one. Uh, and then if you build on that, those controls, those uh, implementations, those mitigations you've put in, you build on those, you could be audited and attain level two and level three, depending on what they are. So 
What exactly are these controls? What are we talking about? They are mostly concerned with very crypto oriented controls, such as the key and seed generation. You know, specifically what they're looking for there is is the person who uses the key generating the key because obviously you don't want somebody else generating the key and then giving it to you because there's a few a few technical security issues there wallet creation key storage and key usage uh, if a key is compromised what's your policy what actions are taken and how quickly do you have to take them things like that key holder grant and revocation policies third party security audits and if you notice it says slash pen test which is interesting need to dive into that more to figure out what they're looking for there data sanitization policy, proof of reserve, which is more of a financial control. And then finally, are your systems providing logs for us to go back and perform forensics analysis on if we ever need them? Now, moving over to the CCSS GitHub, which is where uh, all of the details for this security standard are hosted. I don't see it in here right now, but I do remember reading, I believe this is in beta, uh, meaning it's not a complete product yet. It's not a complete standard yet, but they do encourage community participation. Obviously, if you go to their website, there's a contact us form or a, uh, a volunteer form. You know, they're looking for people to contribute and help build this. I look forward to this. I applaud them for the work they've done. Uh, and I'm pretty excited to see what comes out of this. Now, if you're new to my channel, this is the first video you've seen. Uh, this is venturing down a new path for me, getting into the crypto space like this, but finding a lot of overlap with my security space as well. So I encourage you to subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future and to see where this goes.